Hi guys, it's Janet Wakelin with RemarkablyCreated.com. In today's One Take Wonder video, I am excited to show you my favorite product in the new 2014 Stampin' Up! catalog. The 2014 St Stampin' Up! catalog debuted on June 2nd. And if you do not have a demonstrator that you work with and would like a complimentary catalog, just let me know. Stampin' Up! is a direct sales home party plan company, and sales are through a demonstrator, and there are two ways to order, through the demonstrator directly and through the demonstrator's website. The catalog is available online, but it is much more fun to have your own copy. And everything that I show you today is available in that current catalog. So let's take a look at all of the fun goodies that I'm using alongside these little letter framelits. First, here's the card that I created for the 4th of July, which is one of my favorite holidays. And I'm using the new Dazzling Diamonds designer paper, some of our new um, pattern designer papers, cute little banner set that has our coordinating banner punch, and some little red glimmer stars. And I simply used the alphabet framelits after I did the banner pieces to create the word USA. A couple of other things that you can do. This is a home decor piece I'm working on and you're going to want to stop by RemarkablyCreated.com to see it as a finished piece and I'll give you some some tips on this in just a second so that's some fun things and I'll show you another fun sample at the end. When you receive your little letter framelits they arrive in this little envelope here that's kind of a sturdy um, storage envelope sleeve and you can actually choose to keep them in there on the card that they come with. They do come on a card that has some light lengths of adhesive and the letters are stuck to it and you would just simply pull them off to use them. But what I find is that over time, the adhesive picks up little fuzzes, little dust. Also, that I feel like that as I'm constantly pulling them off, I'm kind of bending them just a little bit. And so I wanted a different system for storing my little letter framelits. And so what I came up with is working with our clear stamp case. And I used a piece of mag magnetic, self-adhesive magnetic sheets. I had a stash from when Stampin' Up! used to carry them in the catalog, but any of the big box craft stores also has magnetic sheets, and I just cut it to size to fit the inside of the case, and then I was able to lay my letters right down on it, and they're not going anywhere. They're stuck there nice and sturdy. One of the other things that I'm finding um, that is in, in dispensable when working with the little letter framelits is the paper piercing tool and I would recommend investing in a second one because it does fit right inside of the case or if you don't have one I would recommend investing in one when you purchase the little letter framelits so that you can store them all together. One of the ways that I have found to work with these letters, the, frame, the little things of course is just to help me lift my letters right up off of, um, what am I going to put here? grab my S so I can use it like that and now remember I showed you the land of the free art piece that I'm working on the width of the big shot is six inches and so you're limited by six inches wide of course you can go as long as you want but I started with a six by eight piece of paper and I'm going to layer it up with different layers so that I can put it into an eight by ten frame and so you can just go ahead and you can lay your letters down on there. Another thing that I have found when working with, let's just set that off to the side, of course I'll have to relayer them. When working with the, uh, the metal little layer framelits is that usually you're inclined to want to use our magnetic platform. Instead what I am finding though is the magnetic platform is not one solid magnet. It is these several little disks that are um, in rows across or down, up and down the magnetic platform and sometimes there's a magnetic pull that will cause the letters to shift and so I'm finding much greater success in working with the original multi-purpose platform that comes with the Big Shot. In addition you're going to want to make sure that you have nice flat acrylic plates to work with when you've had them for a long time and you use them over and over again they may tend to bow and curve just a little bit they've got little lines in them that's not the issue but again you want nice flat ones so this might be the time to invest in new acrylic plates when you purchase a big shot you do get the big shot the multi-purpose platform and two plates but then again these pieces are available separately if for some reason you've ruined yours yours are bent and now you need the new flat ones that I've just recommended 
The other thing about a Big Shot, this is just a tip, nothing to do with the framelits, but yeah, kind of sort of to do with the framelits, is that sometimes you may need a shim, depending on what you've been running through your Big Shot. If you've been running really, really heavy, thick things through, sometimes that may loosen it a little bit. And of course, just the way they're milled, it's sometimes impossible to mill them all identical to whatever hundred thousandths of a you know, millimeter, whatever thing that they're milling them to. And so you may want to use a shim, which is just simply a piece of paper, a little piece of cardboard. And you may want to run a test through. Don't take what's going to be your finished project and use that as your test. Do a little test strip just to see if it is going to cut. So let's see. Let's put that down. And let's take our piece. And I know it's probably going to shift. And you know what? That's also where that little... um paper piercing tool comes in handy is that you can use it to shift your letters around. These little letters remind me um, of a toy my brother had when he was a child called, called an erector set. Had It was metal like this and had the little holes so that you could put your pieces together with the little nuts and bolts that came with it. So it's kind of a fun little memory as I work with these letters. Okay, so now we've run it through and we've cut it and we're going to pop our letters out. This is also where the paper piercing tool may come in handy is if you've got just a little edge that's just snagged just a little bit that just maybe for whatever reason chose not to cut because maybe your shim wasn't shimmed. Or the other thing I'm finding is just like here on the H's, the R's where the V, the E's, that's again just taking this and you can just kind of need a better shim, Janet. There we go. And there we go. So now you can see where I've got my word share. Now, the other thing is, is you're going to see that the paper is behind the letter. And you could have laid a piece of wax paper over your project and then your letters, and the letters would have popped right off and you wouldn't have had that problem. But again, I find that this slides around and I want my letters to stay in place. So again, that's where the paper piercing tool comes in handy. I'm just going to slightly give a little bit of a push and then take my paper piercing tool and just like that. When I'm working with the relief way of doing the letters here where you can see the share and I have the letters popped out, I simply have found myself a little container and I store the letters in there and I'm sure that when I'm sitting at a crop or an open class or something, this will be a great go-to box of letters when I'm feeling a little lazy. And then I can simply take and return my letters to the case. And I do find that they store best when you store them with the raised ridge side up and the raised ridge side is your cutting side, not the smooth side. And then I can just store them in there. And so just again, a few reminders of some ideas for you. Of course, you can use them on cards. This will be great for, um, you know, love, dad, mom, lots of great smaller, shorter words that you'll want to put on there. You're going to have all kinds of fun doing different framed art with them. This one, again, you'll be able to check back to my blog. This is another one I'm starting to work on. And one of the things that I like to do is I like to cut my letters first, and then I like to embellish and add my stamping and things like that. Because I find if I do all of that work, stamping and everything first, and then for some reason have an oops or a boo-boo, then that's a lot to restart over again as opposed to just something like this. And so it's going to be the colors of my new office, those little um, framed art that I'm making for my new office. And then these are great for Project Life. This is a gratitude journal that I've started with, kind of a pictorial gratitude journal. And these are my two boys that I am grateful for. And I used our new Milestones journaling cards with Project Life by Stampin' Up. And from one card, I cut the word wolf, and I took those letters, and I used them up here on this journaling card. I used our new stamp set um, and stamped Life Without Dogs. I don't think so and added um, a little embellishment from the Milestones kit. And then I just backed it with a second journaling card. And then this little piece with the arrows that I stamped on is actually another journaling card that I just cut a square out of. I figure with over, well with over, with a hundred cards in a pack, um, I can definitely, you know, take advantage of layering some of them together. Plus if I 
use them all up, it gives me an excuse to buy more of them. So I hope that I've inspired you with the little letter framelets, giving you some great ideas for using them. Don't forget to visit RemarkablyCreated.com to see the framed piece up close, to request your catalog, or to shop online for any of the things that you've seen. Take care. Thanks for watching, and God bless.